is Roxy and welcome to Enjoy Church Online. Wherever you're joining from, we're so glad you're here. Send a comment or two in the chat so we can say hola. If it's your first time, follow the prompts on screen for ways you can connect with us. We're in for a great time together. So position yourself and lean in. Pastor Shane is bringing a word on the topic of racism and being our brother's keeper. So reach out and invite a friend to the service. Now let's get ready to get our praise on. Woo! Welcome to Enjoy Church Online. We're so excited to praise Him with you this morning. Why don't you jump up on your feet? Why don't you clear your couch out of the way? Come on, make some space. Jesus Christ, this song I sing to you on high. This is worship, this is praise. Oh, King Jesus, have your way. You take me to a higher place. Show me how to live your way. You take me to a higher place. I hold to every word you say. You take me higher. God, we lift up your name. And Father, we ask for your will to be done in our lives. Look, God, we live in crazy, a crazy time, Lord. Father, we just, we just let go of everything, Lord God, today to focus on you. We, we love you so much, Lord God, and we want your will in our lives. We want your will to be done in our lives. Kingdom come in our lives. Amen. Come on, let's sing together. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. And I will last 
for it all but within your will I reside through it all in the storms and fire I will hear your call and follow through the night I surrender now forever you have all of me you are perfect and always have been your will be done in me your will be done in me yes lord have your way you will be done Taste and see that you are good. Only you can satisfy. We declare as the deal longs for if the word is called, I am fixed on Jesus. Eyes. And I surrender.
welcome you, Holy Spirit, into our lives, into our homes, in our cars, wherever we are in this moment. We welcome your Holy Spirit. We acknowledge your presence, Lord, and we ask that you have a way in our lives, in our worlds, Lord. Thank you, Lord. A beautiful exchange left freedom in your way. A veil of heaven open. Your spirit counsels me. His comfort that I hear. Supernatural peace. The atmosphere will shake, my chains will fall away, the power of hell is broken, death and sickness flee, your presence fills me deep, fall afresh on me, Holy Spirit fall.
Hey there enjoyers, I hope you're doing really well today. We're going to come around a time of giving, but before we go anywhere, first and foremost, we would like to thank every enjoyer, every individual, every couple and every family for your ongoing commitment in bringing your tithe and your offerings into the house of God week in and week out. The church might be in lockdown, but we are not in shutdown and one of the reasons for that is your faithfulness and generosity towards the kingdom. God is faithful, amen? We as a church can testify to God's faithfulness over and over again. In a season of so much uncertainty and constant change between what we can and can't do, one thing remains unchanged and that's God's faithfulness towards us as a church, as individuals and as families. Over and over again we hear stories of God's hand moving in places and in ways we could never have imagined. In a time where so many things that are familiar to us have been forced to stop, God has allowed us to pivot, change direction and continue preaching, teaching and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even though these times of uncertainty, these times of fear are there, I know that we have made a decision not to move away from what we know to be right, not to move away from our convictions, not to move away from the knowledge and the precedent we know we have in our Heavenly Father. You see, there are not many things in this world that produce a feeling of fear like the area of finance. Can I share a verse with you in Isaiah 41.10? Fear not, for I am with you. Do not dismay, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We find verse after verse in the Bible speaking about this very thing. It's because this is a key issue that God highlights throughout Scripture. And that theme is, do not fear for I am with you. And this is something we can hold firmly to. You see, fear is not the opposite of faith. It's the very occasion, the very place where our faith and obedience can thrive. The more I trust God, the more I can see His faithfulness come through. The more I trust God, the more I experience that His promises are yes and amen. The more I trust God, the more precedent I have to build upon. The more I trust God, the more peace I have in times of uncertainty. Let not fear be the thing that dominates our thoughts, but let boldness in the knowledge of God's faithfulness be what guides us. Remember that God is always with you. He always has been and always will be. Remember, remember, remember the goodness of God and His faithfulness. Will you join me as we pray today? Father God, I thank you for your faithfulness over and over again in the good times, in the hard times, in the times of uncertainty. And in these times, we pray for boldness, Lord, that you would allow us to remember that all the times that you've been there and we can build Lord and step forward in the knowledge that you are with us God I thank you Lord for the generosity of your church God I thank you for the generosity of every single individual God I pray that you give us wisdom to move forward and to step forward into everything you have for us we pray this in the name of Jesus Amen God bless you church and you have a great day Hi enjoyers, before we get into today's message, I would like to highlight that part 2 of today's message will be an Instagram Live with Pastor Shane Baxter. This will be a conversation with Bindi Kolchaka, Eric Edgerman and Effie and Danny Faludu about bringing light into the dark realms of racism. So please join us at 5pm on Instagram Live on the account Shane A. Baxter. Enjoy the message. Hey there, enjoyers. As we step into the Word today, I'm so aware that as I look to do so, as I look to speak today, I'm doing so in reality with very real little comprehension, understanding, or even awareness of the real matter that I want to speak into. Some would say, Shane, why even go there? Why not be quiet on the matter? Well, to be honest, I'm thinking maybe our silence on some matters just adds to the problem. We may be silent so as not to get it wrong, but in our silence, the problem is multiplying like a cancerous growth on the soul of humanity. Dr. Martin Luther King said, for evil to succeed, all it needs is for good men to stay silent. So let's not be silent. George Floyd, 
He died of asphyxiation at the hands of four police officers in Minneapolis last week. We've all been sick and distressed by the images that we've seen. And so we should be. But when are we going to say no? When are we going to say no more? No more racism. I'm sure we'd all agree that there is no place for it ever, never has been, never will be. And yet so many of us have engaged in it or been complicit or silent on the matter, which means whether we like it or not, this matter is ours to own. So as I go here today, please hear my heart and understand where I'm coming from. I'm well aware that I have no idea what it feels like to be at the wrong end of racism. I have no idea what it feels like to be judged or labeled because of the color of my skin, rejected because of the my heritage or arrested because of profiling. So while I understand that I may not be the most qualified person to speak on this matter, as part of the human race, racism is mine to own. And if racism is mine to own, I believe on some level, racism is mine to fix. Now, some of you will scoff and even laugh at that statement that I believe that racism is mine to fix. But I think every follower of Christ or to have a desire to see racism removed from the face of the earth. For we've all been made in the image of our God, and we've all been made equal in the sight of God. Colossians 3 verse 11 says, Here, meaning in Christ, there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. In Acts chapter 17, verse 26, it says, from one man, he created the nations throughout the whole earth. From one man, that's right, he created all of humanity. In Malachi chapter 2, verse 10, it says, are we not all children of the same father? Are we not all created by the same God? Then why are we faithless to each other, violating the covenant of our ancestors? So scripture makes it clear, very clear. It's easily, easily seen and easy to see. We all have the same Father, which makes us brothers and sisters united by our faith in Jesus Christ. So if we, if we are all brothers and sisters, one people under the Lordship of Christ, where did racism come from? Personally, personally, I would say racism has its origins in the fall of mankind. And we can clearly see that it, within, within a few chapters, it's being outworked. Genesis 4 verse 8 says, Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother and killed him. And so it has been from that time until today because of the sinful state of the heart of humanity that brother has attacked brother, sister has attacked sister, families have devoured each other and nations have raped and pillaged one another. Unfortunately, often what you hear from the church when these issues arise is crickets, silence. I think largely for fear of man, the church is silent when we need to be shouting out the word of God to be the light of the world to be the salt of the earth. Church, we are not called to be silent. I say it again, we are not called to be silent. We're called to be a voice for those who can't speak, and we're called to be an advocate for those who don't have a voice of their own. We're called to be our brother's keepers, to soothe his pain, and when necessary, wrap his wounds. This is not a time to be silent on this matter of racism, but through our love in action, send up a shout that brings about real change. This isn't something Jesus was silent about neither. And neither should we. We shouldn't be silent on this issue. Think about it. What was the parable of the Good Samaritan really all about? In Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 25, it says, One day an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question, Teacher, what must I do to receive eternal life? Jesus replied, What does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him. I love that, right. It's an affirmative. That's right. Right, Jesus told him. Do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions. Isn't that like all of us? We all like to justify our actions at times. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with an illustration. A Jewish man was traveling on a trip from Jerusalem to Jericho. And as he, as he went, he was attacked by bandits. They, they stripped him of his clothes and, and they beat him up. They stole his money. You can read it all right there. And left him for dead beside the road. By chance, a, a priest came along. But when he saw the man lying there, 
he crossed to the other side of the road and, and passed by him. A, a temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt deep pity. Kneeling beside him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with medicine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two pieces of silver and told him to take care of the man. If his bill runs higher than that, he said, I'll pay the difference the next time I am here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. Go and do the same. I'm sure and certain that the expert of the law would have hated this answer, absolutely hated this answer because it highlighted that those who were esteemed within religious circles turning a blind eye to their brother in need. While at the same time, it highlights the fact that it was a person who the religious fraternity despised that came to the aid of their brother in need, who truly was a neighbor. And so it was that he became the poster boy for the kingdom of God and the example that we're all to follow. So while the Jews despised the Samaritans, Jesus paid no attention at all to their evil and foolish customs. Remember this, remember this. When Jesus spoke to the woman at the well and asked her for a drink of water, John chapter 4, verse 9, the woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? He asked her for a drink because he was more interested in revealing a faith that would unite them than revering customs that would divide them. And so it is in the, in the story that Jesus tells the, the teacher of the law. It highlights the fact that the church that you attend, the position that you hold, the ministry that you perform, your, 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 your country of origin, the color of your skin, and the language that you speak, they matter not in the kingdom of God. This is what Paul says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6 that when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, that it makes no difference whether we be circumcised or uncircumcised. What's most important is faith expressing itself in love. When we judge each other because of the color of our skin, have we not subjected ourselves to the depravity of man rather than elevating our thoughts and joining ourselves to the righteousness of Christ? So when I see my brother, when I see my neighbor broken, beaten, attacked and bleeding through the evil rants and realities of racism, rather than making excuses for myself and trying to justify my, my actions, friends, this is what I'm to do. I'm to come alongside. I'm to kneel down beside. I'm to soothe and I'm to bandage their wounds with love. So from a heart of faith that genuinely wants to fix the evil realities of racism, what can I do? This is what I need to do. I need to. This is where it begins with Shane, but maybe it begins with you too. I need to begin by owning it. We need to own whatever part that we have played along the way, whether it be in our participation, engagement, uh, complicity or silence towards it. I need to own it. I'm part of the human race. This is a racism issue. I need to own it. I need to take responsibility. Point number two, we need to pray. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves by owning it and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. We need healing, brothers and sisters. Church, we need healing, and it begins with us. We are the people of God. It begins with us as we own it, as we begin to pray in it. And then point number three, here we go. I need to become my brother's keeper. When the Lord came to Cain and asked him, where is Abel? <laughs> we all know the story. Cain, Cain replies with, am I my brother's keeper? Genesis chapter 4, reading verses 9 and 10. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I don't know, liar. That's what you are. You're a liar. You know exactly where your brother's at. Am I my brother's keeper, he says. He said to him, what have you done? The, the, the voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And friends, I want to say to you today, because of racism, there's the blood of brothers and sisters that are crying out through the generations to the Lord. 
Uh, this thing, it, it, it's, it's not new. I know it's on the, on, 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 the, on the TV. It's in our media at the moment. It's, it's in this season. I know exactly where it's at. But the reality of this, it is not new. It has gone on for generation after generation after generation. And there comes a point when we, the church, we, the people of God, we, the brothers and the sisters who have been slandered and judged and ridiculed and attacked for years, we need to say enough is enough. I will be my brother's keeper. I will be a neighbor to my neighbor. I will, I will go out of my way. I will cross the road. I'm not going to cross the road any longer to step away from it and turn a blind eye, but I'm going to step across the road that I might kneel beside my brother. That I might love him. That I might care for him. You know, sometimes, you know, <clears throat> when Thomas came to Jesus, and Thomas didn't understand really what was going on, it was in that point that Jesus reached out his hands and said, come and put your, your fingers in my hands. You, you know, one of the things that we can do we need to come alongside our brothers and sisters that have been hurt, traumatized, broken, crushed. We need to just go put our fingers in their wounds. We need to go soothe their pain. We need to go bandage their wounds. Church, I know and you know, we know together. As we talk about this issue, I know I cannot fix the world, but I can play my part. I can play my part. I have to own this. I have to keep praying. And I have to keep being my brother's keeper. I want to be a better neighbor. I want to know more about this. I want to understand it better. I think sometimes a lot of us, we make um, judgments and we think we know what's going on here where I think, to be honest, many of us have got no idea what's going on here or the pain that is other people have suffered. But I do believe this, that the Lord is calling us all the Lord is calling us all to own it, to pray, and to be our brother's keeper. That will mean crossing the road. That will mean coming alongside. That will mean soothing the wounds. That will mean bandaging people. That will mean walking with people and talking with people, sharing with people. It will cost you. The, the man put the man on his own donkey and then took him to the inn, and he cared for him. He cared for him. This is the heart of God, that we would care for one another. Church, I want to pray for you today. Because this, this is not an American issue. This is a human issue. Racism is something that has impacted the human race full stop. And we have an opportunity right now to lift our voice, to be a people that don't ignore and won't be quiet anymore, but will actually rise up in faith and be the men and women of God that God would call us to become. I hope and I pray that in this season, we can all grow. We can all take a step forward. I know I can't, fix, I can't fix this all by myself, but you know what I can do? I can take a step forward. And I'm going to ask every enjoyer, I'm going to ask everyone that's part of the church, let's take a step forward together. Let's take a step forward together. We may not be able to fix everything that's happening on planet Earth, but we can reach out to our neighbor. We can reach out to our brother. We can care for one another. We, we can be salt and we can be light in this moment. We can lift up our voice and we can speak for those who don't have a voice. We can be an advocate who don't have someone that will stand for them. We can do this. So church, I want to encourage you today. We're going to pray right here, right now. I, I pray for myself and for Georgie. I pray for our family. I pray for our church. I pray that we would understand that we can actually be part of the solution here. We've, we've been part of the problem. We can be part of the solution. I honestly believe it. If we all take a step forward together as a church, how far can we move our, our community? How far can we move our nation and the nations of the, of the world? But it begins with a decision. One, to take ownership of it. Two, to pray. Three, I will be my brother's keeper. I'm not going to be silent on this any longer, but I'm going to begin to minister from a heart of love. I'm going to bring the love of God. Love overcomes, love conquers all, and love is the answer. If racism began at the fall of mankind, then we know what the answer is. The answer is reconciliation that comes in the name of the Lord. Friends, I want to encourage you. 
as we are our brother's keeper and as we are our neighbor's neighbor, I want to encourage you, let's always understand that the real healing that's going to come into this, it comes as we come back into relationship with God. I want to encourage all of you as we care for others, as we minister to others, let's always have it in our mind that ultimately we want to connect people back to the Father because that's where hearts are mended and hearts are healed. When we come back into relationship with God, it's at that point we can have reconciliation that way. And once reconciliation that way is occurring, then we can have it that way as well. And it's going to be real. Friends, I want to encourage you. And I want to encourage you, let's continue to learn. We, we, we should be learning about this issue. And I want to encourage you to learn about it so you have a greater understanding Standing about it. We want to be educated about it and we want to educate. But I want to say this also, all the knowledge in the world won't change the heart of this matter because the heart of this matter is in the heart of man. And the, uh, the, where, where this is ultimately changed is in reconciliation with our Father. We need to come back to our Father again. And then as we come to our Father, we can come to each other. I want to pray for every enjoyer right here, right now. I want to pray for this matter specifically. One, that we would own it. Two, that we would be praying into it. And three, that we would truly, from this day on, become our brother's keeper. We're going to pray for this matter as a church. And then beyond that, you know where we're going to go? I'm going to give everybody the opportunity to come under the Lordship of Christ. Maybe you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you don't. I don't know where you're at with God. But friends, I tell you the truth. This issue that is ripping humanity apart, it can be solved by coming into relationship with the Father. If we could only get the whole world to come into relationship with the Father, then we might look at each other differently. And that's what I'm praying for. I'm praying and I believe that today there'll be men and women all over Enjoy World, all over the world that are going to say yes to Jesus. But before we go there, can I just pray? Can I pray for you? Can I pray for myself? Can I pray for my family and pray for your family? Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, I pray today. Lord, I pray for every one of us that are watching in I pray for myself. I pray for my wife, Georgie. I pray for our children and I pray for our family, the Enjoy family, Lord God. I pray, Almighty God, Lord, that we would have your mind on this matter. I pray, Almighty God, that we would own that which we need to own. I pray, Lord God, that we would have a heart to pray into this situation, Lord God. For surely, Lord God, we don't fight, Lord, against flesh and blood, but there's spiritual realities that are at work and at play here, Lord God. Lord, we want to pray into this matter. We want to humble ourselves before you and own that which we need to own. We want to turn from our wicked ways and acknowledge you in it all, Lord God. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, heal our land. Heal our land. Heal our land, Lord God. But I pray, Lord God, beyond that also, I pray, Father. Lord, I pray, help us, Lord God, to be our brother's keeper. Lord, help us to feel the pain. Lord, we'll never know the suffering. We'll never know what people have been through. But I pray, Father, help us to feel their pain. Lord, I pray that we would not turn a blind eye when we see people suffering, but we would come alongside. We would kneel down beside. We would soothe their wounds and we would bandage them. Lord, we would pick them up and if need be, carry them ourself. Lord, I pray, Lord God, we wouldn't try and justify actions or the actions of others. But Lord, we would we'd just be honest in your eyes. We'd be honest to each other. I pray that we would seek each other's forgiveness for when we've done the wrong thing. I pray, Lord God, we would be our brother's keeper. I pray, Lord God, Lord, that we would be a neighbor to each other. The teacher asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? But Jesus teaches him how to be a neighbor. Lord, I pray that we would be neighbors one to another, that we might bring, Lord God, the message of love and reconciliation to the Father and to each other. I pray, Lord God, Lord, that we would be the answer. Lord, we would be the answer. We, we, we don't know in the fullness of it all how we got here, but we can be the answer. Lord, I pray, Lord, teach us, empower us, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with love, Lord God, that knows no bounds. Lord, I pray that you would help us in all of this in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray and I say no more racism, but we release the love of God into our community and through our community into the nations of the world, in Jesus' wonderful name, amen and amen. Friends, maybe you're watching in today and, and you don't have a relationship with Jesus yourself. Maybe you're watching in and you're understanding part of what I say. You're hoping that what I would say would be a reality, but you don't have a relationship with God and you're a little confused and conflicted in it all. Friends, I tell you the truth. 
we're all confused and we're all a little conflicted. But when we come to Christ, truth becomes a reality. When we come to Christ, all of a sudden, the light of Christ begins to shine into areas of the way we've been doing life and what we've been a part of. And, and He begins to go after us in the most beautiful way because He wants to restore us and He wants to make us whole. Uh, until we're right with God, this issue of racism will always be part of our world and a part of our reality. The, the only way that we can go beyond it is to be truly made into the image of Christ. So I want to encourage you today because the Bible tells us clearly that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The only way that we can overcome sin is to be made right with the Father and receive the forgiveness that comes in the name of the Lord. So wherever you're at today, I want to encourage you, if you're not right with God, can I encourage you right here, right now, receive the love of Jesus. Now, many of you may have heard about Jesus. Maybe you've grown up in church or around church, and maybe you've got Christian friends. But at the end of the day, all of that matters not. If you're not right with God, you're not right with God. You've got to give your life to Christ. Friends, I want to encourage you. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says the wages for that sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Friends, I want to encourage you, if you're not right with God today, give your life to Jesus. Maybe you grew up in the church or maybe you had a relationship with God, but for whatever reason have drifted away. Can I encourage you, make a decision. Drift happens, but make a decision today. Come to Jesus. Come back to Jesus, whatever the case may be. Give your life to Christ. So if you're there, this is what I want to say to you. If you're watching on our online platform, on the bottom right-hand side of your screen, you'll see a little raised hand there. If you want to give your life to Jesus today, can I encourage you, hit that raised hand right now. Just hit that raised hand. Someone from our team is going to see that, and they're going to start talking to you. They're going to help you in your journey with God. If you're watching on Facebook, then I want to encourage you, just write in the comments there, I want to give my life to Jesus. Just write it now. Just do it. I want to give my life to Jesus. Some of you, you're sitting there, and it's like, I want to. I don't know. I want to. Just do it. I tell you the truth. It will be the best decision you can ever make. So if you're watching on, on the online platform, hit that little raised hand right now. I want to give my life to Jesus. If you're watching on Facebook, write it in the comments down the bottom. I want to give my life to Jesus. And we are going to pray together. Someone is going to connect you on those platforms that we are going to pray right here, right now. Why don't you pray with me, church? Let's all pray together. If you want to give your life to Christ, pray this with me. And we're going to land the plane. Here we go. Dear Jesus, I thank you today for bringing me to this place that I might give my life to you. Today, Jesus, I give you my life. I give you my all. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me of my sin. Help me, Lord, to live a life that is both pleasing and honoring of you. So today, Jesus, I give you my life and I give you my all. I ask you, Jesus, be my God, be my Lord, be my friend, be my Savior. I believe, Jesus, from this day on, that you are all of that. And I'm your child, and I'll never be alone again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let's give it up for everybody who just raised their hands. I want to say God bless you. Also want to encourage you, lean into our new Christian uh, courses, wherever you may be, that we can help you now begin your journey in Christ. It's going to be an incredible journey, no doubt about that. Hey, I just want to send out a big shout out to everyone from Enjoy. And maybe you're not from Enjoy, but you're watching in today. You know, we, we've all been distressed. Distressed is probably the word I would use. We've all been absolutely horrified with the things that we have seen over the past week, 10 days. That's what I want to say to all of you. If you need someone to talk to, please reach out to us. Please reach out to us. I, I know that this reality has impacted us all in very different ways, but this is what I want you to know. You are my brother and you are my sister and I will be your keeper. We will be your keeper. We love you. We're praying for you. For all our brothers and sisters, whether they be part of our church, whether they be part of our church or not, we are all part of the same humanity race. We are praying for us all, but particularly within the Enjoy family, for our brothers and sisters that are suffering and struggling through this season, we want you to know that our prayers are with you, but we want to go beyond that. We want to come alongside of you. We want to kneel alongside of you. We want to feel your pain. We want to pray with you that when we get up together, we can walk together. Know that we love you. We're praying for you. Kidmania is about to come. We all love Kidmania. 
But in this moment, uh, I feel like in some ways it's hard to celebrate out when we've dealt with such a big issue. This is a big issue. Let's keep owning what we need to own, keep praying what we need to pray into, but let's make a commitment, an ongoing commitment from beyond this service to be our brother's keeper. God bless you, church. Thank you, Pastor Shane, for today's word. Together, let's commit to being a brother's keeper and loving our neighbours as ourselves. If you said yes to giving your life to Christ, you have made an awesome decision. On our screen is a link to fill out a form so that our new Christians team can connect with you and help you with your next steps. We hope you were blessed and encouraged by today's service. Now, Kid Mania is about to start. And these services are so much fun. They're not only impacting little kids, but they're impacting big kids. Hi, Enjoy Kidmania. I'm so glad that you're tuning in today. We have a really cool program lined up. So get comfy and get ready. All right, if you're a parent with younger kids, I really encourage you to check out the Bible app for kids. We also have other resources available on the Enjoy Church website. So go ahead and download the app as well. All right, kids, if you're ready, let's go straight into it. Here we go. Are you ready to praise?
time. Well kids, it is game time. And what that means is we're gonna have a bit of a challenge. It's gonna be a plank challenge. So I have two people that I've brought over to give us a hand with this. We've got Nav and Gabby. And we're gonna see who can last the longest. So they're gonna bow down, not bowing down to idols, but we're gonna bow down into the plank position. Can you show us the plank position, guys? Okay, very, very good. And when I say go, we're gonna start and we're gonna see who can last the longest, okay? Is it gonna be Nav? Or is it gonna be Gabby? Well, let's see how it goes. The time begins in three, two, one, let's go. Okay, both are starting very, very strong. Gabby's laughing, but she is like a statue. What's that, Gabby? I'm not bowing down to idol. Very, very good. That's what we like to see. Nav, his, his face is like flint. It's... No, we're not going to get anything out of Nav right now. Okay, so they're just going strong. Let's see how we go. Nav, look at that focus. Oh my goodness. He's in it to win it. You okay, Gabby? I must admit, Gabby's not moving at all. But I think we're getting some mini wobbles. What an epic battle this is. Now, very important tip, kids, at home, and you guys here, don't forget to breathe. You're not even shaking, Gabby. <laughs> it hurts. Oh, Nav's got some shakes. All right, so Gabby's out. Look at those shakes. ACDC would say he's shaking at the knees. That's what we want to see. Do the shakes. Not long now. Oh, and that is it. Wow. Great job. Nav, great job. Gabby, you guys did so, so well. But today we have a victor, and that victor is Navandro. Well done, well done. Do you have anything to say? Our God's good. Come on. So good. Okay. Gabby, is there anything you want to say? No one's really a loser. Ain't that the truth? Well, that's me signing off for Game Time at Kid Mania. Hey kids, did you know that God loves you so much? He loves you more than anything in this world. And more than anything in this world, He wants you to worship Him. He desires your worship. He created you to worship Him. He's actually jealous for your worship. And you might be at home thinking, God is jealous for my worship? Yeah, well, He created you. He made you just for Him and for His purposes. Now, if someone else said that, that they were jealous for your worship, that would sound really crazy. But you know what? Only God can say that because He is God and He deserves all the worship and all the praise. You see, He doesn't want you to be worshiping anything else apart from Him. It says in the Bible in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 4, do not put your trust in idols or make metal images of gods for yourselves. I am the Lord your God. You see kids, God doesn't want us to have any idols. He doesn't want us to worship any idols. He doesn't want us to make any idols. 
But you might be at home thinking, but I don't know what an idol is. Well, an idol is anything that takes God's place in your life. It's anything that you love more than you love Jesus. And you see, some idols are very obvious. Some people, they have idols that are statues that they put in their homes and they bow down and they worship the statues. But a statue is just made by human hands. It's nothing like God at all, and it's definitely not deserving of worship. Then there are other idols, idols that we have in our heart. I like to call these sneaky idols. Now these idols, they creep up and they take God's place, sometimes without us even realizing it. You see, if we love time on our device more than we love spending time with Jesus, then that device has become an idol. If we actually prefer to be spending time playing sport instead of meeting together and, and worshiping God and, and enjoying Kid Mania, then that sport has become an idol. You see, there's so many different idols that we can have in our lives. Maybe you're, you're out in public and it's time to, to eat and you prefer to not say grace because you're worried about what people might think when they look at you praying. Well, those people's opinions of you has now become an idol because you're more worried about what they think than what Jesus thinks. And you know what? The Bible says that it's more important for us to please God than to please people. It says in the Bible in Acts chapter 5 verse 29, we must obey God rather than human beings. Well kids, we're going to turn to a video where we see three men that had great courage and great faith to do what was right, even though it wasn't easy. Let's take a look. I am Meshach, this is Shadrach, and this is Abednego. We were discussing how the king is wasting money on a statue. A statue to a false god. One he wants us to bow to, but we never will. It's pure gold, but that's all it is. Just metal. Our god created everything, even the gold in that statue. When we pray to him, he hears and answers our prayers because he is real. Because our God alone is worthy of worship. He commands we not bow to other gods. Yet if we do not bow, the king will only see it as direct disobedience to his authority. It is a difficult choice to make. If we disobey the king, we will be thrown into a blazing furnace. Behold this glorious creation of mine, how it watches over all of Babylon. My lord, the ceremony awaits. Excellent. Today all will worship at the feet of my statue. People of all nations and languages, listen to the king's command. When you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, bow to the ground to worship King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. My legs are shaking, Shadrach. What will happen to us? Remember earlier when you thought you couldn't do this, and I said God would be with us when the time came? Yes. He is with us. Yes. God strengthens me even now. Anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Then we stand together? Yes. Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the image which I have made. If you refuse, you will be cast immediately into the middle of a blazing furnace! And who is the god who will deliver you from my hands? Nebuchadnezzar. We have no need to answer you in this matter. Our God, whom we serve, 
is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O King. But even if he does not, we want to make it clear to you, Your Majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Then heat the furnace to seven times its usual temperature! Take them! Now! Tie them up! Cast them into the furnace! Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? Look, I see four men, unbound, walking around in the fire, unharmed. And the fourth looks like a god. Servants of the Most High God, come out and come here! Blessed be the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They defied my command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own. I will not allow any person to say anything against their god. Anyone who does will be dealt with severely. Well, wow, kids, what an amazing Bible story for today. We were able to see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and their great faith in God. They didn't just have little faith, they had big faith. It would have been so hard for them to live in those times when everyone was bowing down to the golden statue, but they said that they would not bow down. They knew that to not bow down meant that they would be thrown into a fiery furnace, but whether they lived or whether God saved them and it was part of his plan, they didn't know, but they still trusted God anyway. You know what? Can I encourage you at home to not bow down to the idols in your life? Don't bow down to the physical ones, the ones that are real obvious, like the statues, but also don't bow down to the sneaky ones, the ones that creep up in our heart to try and take God's place of worship in your life. You know what? God wants all of your worship. And when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't bow down, what they were really doing is they were giving their worship back to God. They were putting God in his rightful place as king of all. And can I encourage you to do the same? Worship God with all of your heart. Don't bow down to any idols. Give God all the worship because he is good, he's loving, and he deserves it. How about we pray together? Lord God, I wanna thank you for today. I wanna thank you for the amazing gifts that you've given us. I thank you, God, that you are a great God and you are deserving of all the worship and all the praise. And right now, Lord God, I pray, Father, that you would show us if there's areas in our lives where we have idols, whether they be obvious ones or the sneaky ones, whether it be iPads, whether it be sport, whether it be whatever it is. I pray, Lord God, that we would remove those idols, that we wouldn't bow down, but we would give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Alright kids, that was super amazing. I hope you had so much fun. Thanks for joining us online. We hope you have a really good week full of faith and fun because at Kidmania, that's who we are. Kidmania, Kidmania, that's who we are, that's who we are. A huge thank you to our incredible Kidmania team for that fun program. I told you it was going to be fun and thank you for joining us today. For ways you can stay connected this week, make sure you're following Enjoy Church and your location on social media. See you again soon. Bye.
Thank you.